Okay, welcome everybody. Um, this is our second of three panels that are introducing us to various Quaker organizations around our Hello. universe. And, um, Hi, and, Jake, how are you? and today we're going to be hearing from What's American Service Committee, AFSC. We need your help with some money. And, whoops, let me, okay. What's that and what? Friends General Conference, FGC. Friends Peace Teams and, and uh, Friends World Committee for Consultation and Right Sharing of World Resources. We have, uh, we will hear from each of them. We'll introduce each one in order alphabetically in that order that I just read them. Um, to give everybody a good chance to talk and to hear from each of the five groups, I'm gonna be pretty strict about giving each group exactly 10 minutes and I will hold up my little one minute warning when you have used nine of those minutes and, and hope that that helps everybody stay within our framework so that we'll, we'll end the first presentation part at five o'clock and then we will split into breakout rooms and each organization will be in the breakout room and Bill will explain at five o'clock how how you can choose, you will be able to choose your own breakout room and go to the one that you want to hear about that organization. It is possible to switch yourself at some point if you, if one of them ends early and you want to go hear something else or if you got into the wrong one, but we'll talk about that when the time comes. Um, so I just want to, uh, I think we'll just start right in and I'll introduce, I will let you each introduce yourselves. I will just say the name of who you are and then we'll get going with each organization. So first we're happy to have Melissa Stoner from AFSC who will talk to us first. Thank you, Susan, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I am sitting in my home in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So greetings from Philadelphia as well. And uh, I am, on day 12 of COVID. So if my voice uh, starts to go, that is why. And you can hold me in the light because it's really getting old. But uh, all in all, it hasn't been that bad. It just has been long. So, um, and I'm grateful it's the first time I've had it too. So I represent the American Friends Service Committee and I'm going to try to share my screen. We didn't practice this, but let's see if it works. Are you seeing the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna minimize all of you. So Susan, if I go long, uh, you might have to verbally <laughs> let me know. <laughs> uh, so I'm sure a lot of you know, but let me just do a brief uh, dive uh, into AFSC, our history, our roots. Uh, AFSC was rooted in Quaker values and founded with the desire to bring peace in a time of conflict. Um, AFSC's beginning in 1917 brought Quakers from across the United States together and established a way to be of non-military service as our country entered World War I. So I don't, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time today going through the 105 years of history and impact. Um, I think some of you know it well, others may not. Uh, just a quick glimpse uh, into some of the highlights of our history. Uh, those would be um, um, our work in Europe through World War I and World War II, and reconstruction, um, that work along Side the British Quakers and was acknowledged with a Nobel Peace Prize. Um, our anti-racism work started in the 1920s and included direct work with Martin Luther King Jr. Um, we've taken unpopular stands against and done advocacy against the internment of Japanese Americans, against apartheid in South Africa and Palestine. Um, we've emp um, empowered many communities and um, been part of many social change leaders uh, who have come through or alongside AFSC. So if your history, want to know more about the history, we can schedule a time to talk more, but I want to dive a little more for our time today into our, our mission, um, or as uh, we're saying here, our trunk and, our, and then our branches and leaves. Today, AFSC is guided by the Quaker belief in the divine light of each person. AFC works with communities and partners in 18 countries and 26 U.S. cities. We work to challenge unjust systems and promote lasting peace. To achieve our mission, we have a vision statement that says we seek a just, peaceful, and sustainable world, free of violence, inequality, and oppression. 
and we focus our work on building just and sustainable peace, just economies, and just responses to migration. And I I'm take a side note here, I found it interesting listening to yesterday's organizations that this common thread of this world that we seek. Uh, so I'll just put that out there as you're listening to various organizations. But um, AFSC, as I said, has kind of three branches. So let's dive into uh, those three. And I'm going to highlight just one or two programs in each. As I said, there are uh, 18 countries and 26 cities where we work. So I'm not going to, it's going to, in 10 minutes, I can't dive into all of them. But uh, our work around just and sustainable peace is work that uh, works for a world that invests in alternatives to the harmful systems of violence to, in order to enable sustainable peace and prioritize human dignity. <clears throat> One place AFSC is raising awareness of state violence is, uh, you may have heard about our work to raise awareness around the Israeli brutal campaign uh, that locks Palestinian children into indefinite detention. This is pictured here as Joyce Ejluni, who is a Palestinian American Quaker, uh, who is our general secretary. In the US, our Just and Sustainable Peace includes our work in Michigan and many other places, because we know that many of the systems in the US, especially the criminal legal system, the education sector, housing and financial systems are so embedded with racism. So we seek to bring visibility to the deep inequalities and to provide alternative models that promote community health. And we seek to reform or outright abolish systems that affect millions of Americans unfairly, especially our black and brown communities. If you were part of the workshop last night that my colleague Mary Zirkel did on community safety beyond policing, this is a, that was a fine example of some of our work in that area, seeking uh, to divest from systems um, such as policing and prisons and invest in community uh, safety. Our second branch, our just economic work, uh, is in West Virginia, Atlanta, New Mexico, Chicago, and throughout the US, where we partner to lift up economic so solutions like living wages, fair labor, and the creation of safe and quality jobs and food. One example of just economic work in the, in the international realm is AFSC worked recently with the World Bank and policies at the African Union and the EU, as well as the US Congress to advocate, advocate for, for the forgiveness of Somalia's debt. Lots of examples of our work, economic justice work throughout our work in Africa. But additionally, our new strategic plan applies a climate justice lens to all of our work. This allows us to see the effect of environmental change on the issues of economic insecurity as well as migration and global conflict. Our third branch, just responses to migration. In Colorado and other places throughout the US, we support young dreamers and undocumented migrants who are living in the US, helping them create a pathway for jobs, education, and citizenship. As well, we work to end policies that criminalize border communities and to end systems of mass surveillance, militarism, and detention, all which criminalize Im immigrants. And we work with displaced people across the globe in places like Myanmar, Syria, Guatemala, and Southern Africa. We wanna ensure that they are safe and secure, and we work to provide opportunities for them to return home or create thriving lives in their new communities. Alongside these three branches, is another uh, area where we bear some fruit. For over a century, AFSC has continually evolved, growing alongside each new rising generation of friends, capital F friends and lowercase friends, as they confront justice. To show the strength of our commitment to young Quakers and young people from all backgrounds, we wanna to continue to nurture and develop peacemakers that will carry on this work in their schools, in AFSC programs, and in their own communities. Um, exciting uh, for us is in May, we launched a new initiative to further this commitment. It's called the Emerging Leaders for Liberation. 30 young adults, uh, 15 from Quaker colleges and meetings, and 15 from uh, AFC program communities are deepening their social justice and leadership skills. While it's only just begun, we are excited to see where this bold social change work 
uh, will grow and empower our program work. AFSC has always been able to make an impact because we call on a broad group of supporters across the country. Each member of our community makes us stronger. Our strength together forms a movement. In small groups, in Quaker meetings, we are activists, supporters, volunteers, leaders, and community stakeholders. Together, we are a movement for peace. And I'm glad to be part of that. I'm glad that many of you are part of that and that you can uh, also be part of it if you have not yet joined. We have a couple specific ways for Quaker meetings to develop a deeper connection through our Friends Liaison Program. So if you wanna learn more about how your meeting can connect, um, I'd be happy to share more about that in the breakout group. Um, you can also come and learn more about our programs there in the Midwest or any specific place around the globe you might wanna ask about. But I realize there are uh, several other wonderful organizations you will uh, be able to choose from today. And so, um, I'll post a few links in, in the chat when I'm finished here. Um, you can access our yearly meeting report, um, which has lots of great information and links. You could uh, help us with an online survey we're doing with Quakers this summer. I also post that link and I will post the link for the Friends Liaison Program where you would sign your meeting up. And this is a specific thing. I think meetings sometimes say, well, we have people that are connected, but we're really looking for a specific uh, person to serve as li liaison and deepen and bridge the communication. And there's multiple ways that's happening. So I'll stop there because I have a sense of I'm probably at my time. I'll stop sharing. Okay. Th thank you very much, Melissa. I, I hope you're feeling better. I can hear oh. that in your voice. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate your coming nonetheless. We all do. Okay, and our next speaker to talk about FGC, Friends General Conference. Um, yeah, my timer just went up. <laughs> uh, is uh, Rachel Ernst Stalhut. Uh, and I know I saw you sign in. I don't see you on my screen, but I'll fa have faith I'm here. Yo, oh, okay, great, thanks. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Rachel Ernst Stalhut. I am the Spiritual Deepening Program Coordinator for French General Conference. I'll tell you about that in a minute. I'm also visiting Lake Erie Yearly Meeting for your sessions as the FGC visitor. And I'm also the current presiding clerk of Ohio Valley Yearly Meeting. So I'm visiting as your neighbor yearly meeting. Um, I don't have a slideshow prepared, but I did look at the model of roots, trunk, and branches so that I can share a little bit about French General Conference. Uh, French General Conference, many of you may have been involved in various ways. It's um, an organization that was founded in 1900 as a general conference that was held every other year for um, a collaboration of seven yearly meetings. And it has expanded over the years to be um, a coalition of 16 yearly meetings and 11 independently affiliated monthly meetings. Um, you know, it's local and regional Quakers in North America coming together to um, nurture our spiritual lives. The trunk of FGC, uh, you know, what holds us up, what keeps us going is nurturing the spiritual vitality of the Religious Society of Friends and particularly unprogrammed friends or dually affiliated meetings that are affiliated with French General Conference and Friends United Meeting. Those are our key members. Um, FGC develops programs, services for friends and meetings and for seekers, you know, people who are curious about Quakers. Um, and we do that with the work of a lot of volunteers, including members of our central committee who are representatives from the various monthly yearly meetings. So um, if, you, if you find anything I say intriguing and you want to become one of Lake Erie Yearly Meetings FGC Central Committee reps, I'm sure your nominating committee would be happy to hear that. Um, here are some verbs associated with the work of FGC. Explore, deepen, connect, serve, and witness. 
And uh, to talk a little bit about our programs, I am going to put our, we have a website, a new website. I'm gonna put that in the chat and I'm also gonna share my screen for just a minute to talk about, uh, I said we offer so programs and services and sometimes it's hard to know, where do I find <laughs> these things that FGC is offering? So uh, let me share my screen real quick and I'll show you the beautifully newly designed website we have. So the key things I'd like to point out on FGC's website are um, right here with the programs tab. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each of these. Um, you might've heard of the gathering is one of our keystone programs. That's probably our oldest well-known program that um, I'll, talk, I'll tell you about in a minute. I also wanna point out the resources tab, which we're really proud that we have resources scattered all over our old website and we took some time and organized them. And these could be a starting point for you if you're meeting, um, for example, practical tools for your meeting. Let's take a look at that. You know, if you have uh, questions about business practices, clerking, clearness committees, um, outreach and welcoming newcomers, virtual spaces for Quaker spirituality, um, we have organized all of our resources. There's also um, spiritual tools for your meeting. Things like support for faithfulness, supporting spiritual gifts in ministry, um, your meeting and social justice concerns. I think you can go to AFSC's website for that also. <laughs> we, we're not very in-depth for that resource quite yet. Um, but building intergenerational community, we have resources. So um, I wanted to point that out. FGC is also the... I don't know how to say it. Um, Quaker Books is a program of FGC, and that is a bookstore that carries Quaker-related pamphlets, books, spirituality, justice-related materials. So Quaker Books is related to Friends General Conference. I think I'm going to stop my share so I can you can see my face and not just a website. Um, so the gathering is an annual conference that FGC holds. It involves worship, workshops, and community for all ages. It's held in different places across the country. We have had, the last three gatherings have been virtual. And we're being, you know, just hold, it, hold in the light our whole society <laughs> so that we're able to meet in 2023 in Western Oregon. That is where the gathering is gonna be. We did a new experiment this year, which was we knew we needed to go virtual for the gathering because of the COVID numbers, but we heard from our particularly young adults, we need to be together. It is vital for our spiritual community to be together. So FGC held a program, a smaller conference called YAY, which was young adults and youth. Um, and that was just four days in Virginia in July. Um, I had my daughter and I went and it was like all the good stuff of the gathering with children's programming and young adults and intergenerational. So we're hoping that we can learn something from that to take to the gathering in the future. Um, and we were fairly COVID safe, the best we could be. Other FGC programs that might be useful for your meetings or yourself as individuals. We have the Ministry on Racism, which helps Quakers do the work of dismantling white supremacy, both in our meetings um, and also the bigger community. Um, thanks, Neil. Neil talking about my, my sweet daughter. Um, so the Ministry on Racism, one thing that has really expanded over the time of COVID is offering program, virtual programming for friends of color that has become an incredibly supportive space, including worship, open houses. Um, so if you have, if you are a friend of color, I can tell you how to get involved. Or if you have uh, friends of color in your meeting who would like community and connection. The Ministry on Racism has, is doing some great work um, creating spaces for um, Quakers who are friends of color to, to have their own space and, you know, a space that's hopefully free of white supremacy um, and about building relationships. So that's exciting work. I coordinate the Spiritual Deepening Library and the e-retreats. Um, e-retreats are online courses that we offer they're about four weeks long. I can tell you, I am working on the fall schedule. We are gonna have uh, Becoming Patterns and Examples is a four week course. And it is about how do we live our faith 
um, in, in the world? How do we, you know, how does justice uh, come out of our faith? That's called Becoming Patterns and Examples. We're going to do Silence and Light for Quaker newcomers, which if you have newcomers in your meeting who might want to know, how do I know when to speak during vocal ministry? Or what does it mean to center down? Or how do I participate in a Quaker business meeting? Silence and Light for Quaker newcomers is for folks who define themselves as new to Quaker faith and practice or curious. So we'll be offering that this fall. We're also going to offer uh, a, a weekend e-retreat called Maps and Guides, which is um, Michael Levy is one of our facilitators and he came up with this new program um, based on an article he wrote for French Journal. So we're gonna offer that for him. He's gonna offer that for us or for all of you. Um, so spiritual deepening e-retreats, they happen online. They have a Zoom component for connecting. They have an online component for looking at content and you know going deeper into the topic. And the Spiritual Deepening Library, which I should, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm just acting like I have all the time in the world, right? Um, the Spiritual Deepening Library is here under resources, and it is a set of materials that you can take into your meeting and do small groups. You can do them over Zoom, you can do intergenerational things. So you could pick a topic such as a Quaker way of living with dying. And when you click on that topic, we have facilitation guides, voices of friends, spiritual practices, materials for children, uh, materials for intergenerational approaches. So the Spiritual Deepening Library, let's say you want to do the a visual expression of a Quaker way of living with dying. You could print out a facilitation guide and take this activity into your meeting or onto a Zoom call to you know, be a tool for helping your group, your meeting approach the, I, the topic of you know, living with dying. So I am a big fan of the Spiritual Deepening Library. I encourage you to look through it for your meeting. I also wanna briefly mention that FGC has the Quaker Finder website, which is you can put in your zip code and it tells you Quaker meetings near you. And that is our always our most visited page on our website. So, you know, there's a lot of curiosity about friends and people come to Quaker Finder and look for meetings. So uh, make sure your meetings Quaker Finder info is up to date. Uh, and you can ask me how to do that if you want. Um, in no, addition- I'll just mention the time is up, but you finish what you're- uh... I don't oh, know. You the time is up. In the <laughs> I must have missed your one minute. Okay, um, so okay, just I'll finish. close out by saying since about 2017, FGC has been actively committing to becoming an anti racist faith community, and we hope that what we've learned as an organization can help your meetings. So, we are also a resource for friends, for individuals, and for friends who are looking to become actively anti racist. And I look forward to talking more. So, I will forward to the breakout group. Thanks very much, Rachel. I'm not sure how to how to let people see me when uh, when we're in the, these little tiny squares, but thank you. Um, next, we will hear from the Friends Peace Teams, and we have two presenters with us today, Nadine Hoover and Jonathan Vogelborn. Welcome. Well, thank you. And uh, we're going to do history first, and then um, and Nadine will start with that, and um, I will fill in on the some of the trunks, and together we're going to rise to the branches. So it'll be fun. <laughs> so I go for it, Nadine. Um, so Friends Peace Team started in um, 1993. It was a group of um, friends from about six or seven different yearly meetings who got together and just talked about their concern for the suffering in Bosnia and Herzegovina and wanted to be able to go out and to be people with people in their suffering. And so they came together um, and were traveling out to visit different places. In 1999, the violence in the world was really escalating dramatically. And um, David Zaremka began working in the African Great, Great Lakes region around Rwanda and other Kenya and other countries around there. Um, and not long after that, we started doing AVP 
um, Val Live Oak started doing AVP workshops in Central America and in a number of countries in Central America. Um, I also began at that time working in Asia and West Pacific and brought that work under Friends Peace Teams, the care of Friends Peace Teams in about 2007. Um, and and the Friends Peace Teams really supports these kinds of the peace ministries rising among friends. When the Friends International Library closed in 2013, Friends Peace Teams took the Power of Goodness uh, story collection under our care to keep that alive among friends. Um, and then in 2019, Paula Palmer brought her um, Ministry of Right uh, Toward Right Relationship with Native People under Friends Peace Teams. So we have just, we are a group of friends supporting friends doing peace work in the world. Jonathan? You're on mute, I'm, so we can't uh, yeah, hear you. I'm, yeah, I'm Jonathan Vogelborn. And um, I, have, I am the next generation from the founders, basically. I've been clerking the Friends Peace Teams Council for the last three years. And I wanna take you on a tour of our website, which has all of the roots and fruits of what we do. Um, so here I go, I share a screen. Um, you folks got it, yeah? Okay. So you can see at the outset, African Great Lakes and Asia West Pacific, the peace building in Las Americas, toward right relationship with native peoples, and one that uh, is new somewhat in the last few years, Friendly Book Collaborative, which includes peace libraries and uh, peace schools. The power of goodness is there as well. And literacy for peace and justice, capacity building. But who we are, Quaker Yearly Meetings, Friends Peace Teams is a spirit-led organization that develops long-term relationships with communities in conflict around the world to work for justice and healing and to create enduring cultures of peace. <clears throat> where we work. We work in um, these areas, as you've seen. What we do, we rely on the power of a living spirit to bring life, joy, peace, and justice among people who have suffered on all sides of oppression, violence, or war. Grounded in mutual discernment, we work together as equals to create peaceful, just societies. And here are some of the things under Empower and Heal, alternatives of violence, cultures of peace, trauma resiliency, and I'll highlight healing and rebuilding our communities, which uh, evolved out of the genocide in uh, Rwanda and Burundi, taking the alternatives of violence project methodology and really working with survivors of the genocide on all sides bringing them together across the divide and sustaining time with them, not just a workshop, but walking with them as it goes along. Very powerful. And that's uh, replicated in many other countries now. Um, educate and Liberate, there's the Friends Peace Libraries. This is the our, our friendly book collaborative, as we call it. Uh, Act in Solidarity and Justice uh, Toward Right Relationship with Native Peoples, Ecology and Social Justice. Who we work with, here's a long list of folks, uh, various kinds of folks we work with. And here are a bunch of articles and there is some how to get involved. So the there's lots more on that website to, to, to look over, to look through. Um, and But I think what I want to highlight for today is the, um, is the sense that, um, <clears throat> As an organization, we are people to people, really trying to connect in that in a, in a very local way. We are basically autonomous programs that share this peace building, the sense of discernment, the sense of spirit led. Uh, we have spent the last two or two and a half years, um, like many other organizations, really de delving deep into the question of how do we be an anti-racist, decolonized, uh, toward right relationship group, Friends Peace Teams. And that's, we spent a lot of time to begin with on the who is the we. And uh, if you go to our about page, we put a bunch of little uh, pictures of all the people who are involved with Friends Peace Teams, about 50, 60 people in the core group around the 15 countries around the world. 
And what we've started to see in the who is the we is that why is it that a small group of mostly European descent people in what we call the, the, the coordinating council from yearly meetings, representatives, how is it that we're in control of this? When we look at the vastness of who the we is, that we, we can bring together folks in some kind of a global coordinating team, decentering the United States. So we were talking when we've got on about, about time zones. Our time zones go from East Africa to the Asia, uh, West Pacific, to the US, to, to Europe. There's no good time to meet, zero. You gotta meet twice. So when we have events, we have two events, one early, early morning for wherever you are and one late at night where, wherever you are and some get to go in the middle of the day, but we shift that around. But to decenter North America, we're, we're looking at taking the, what we call the coordinating council, which is really North America, making that one of the groups and developing a global coordinating team. So I'll pass to Nadine. So, so um, we, I think one of the unique things about Friends Peace Teams is that we're not organized around specific programs or, or agendas per se, but we really are support the ministries that rise among friends. So some people say, why aren't you working in such and such a place? I say, are you called to work there? We'll support you. <laughs> so it's, it's just us, them is us. And um, I'd like to, so if you go to the website and type in any kind of idea or place or things, news comes up and you can see the kinds of things that we're doing. One thing I'd like to hold up is the teams we have in Ukraine. We've been working on doing the power of goodness and AVP and psychosocial supports for displaced people since 2014, which was when uh, Russia first invaded Ukraine. And so we have um, trainers in seven different cities around Ukraine. We're trying to build a new team in Lviv. Um, we could use people who, um, since we only have a half-time bookkeeping staff, all of the rest of us are volunteers. You're all welcome to come help us on committees or get involved in supporting people. We can use people that just follow one peace worker and read their news and give them feedback and ask them questions because they're not writers, they're not journalists, they're working in a second or fifth language. So um, the support for them, and we and um, we could really use some support right now for the work we're doing in Ukraine. I'd also like to hold up another place where people could really get involved is with the peace libraries. And if you go online, you can look at the books that we're recommending. We really need, thank you for the one minute warning. We really need, um, people especially that would look for Spanish books that meet with Quaker principles um, and work for peace and justice and cover the different reading levels and make recommendations because we have now two locations in Central America where we'd like to put up um, peace libraries, but they really want Spanish books. So there's many opportunities. Please feel free to get a hold of Jonathan and myself or anybody at Friends Peace Teams and just find ways that suit you. And then let other people in your meetings know that this is an opportunity for any of us to be involved. Thank you. Thank you, folks. And as she looks for her mute right. button, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna add one more thing. The Power of Goodness program was a program that um, started with P Philadelphia yearly meeting. Went to FGC as lighting candles in the dark. Got taken to Russia and expanded. So the Power of Goodness uh, program is a multi generational Quaker program that we are very proud that we're keeping alive and making available to everybody. So I hope you look for that for your first day schools too and use that. Sorry, Susan. Thank That's you. okay. Thanks for filling in while I found my mute button. And thanks Nadine and Jonathan for that uh, interesting presentation. And I was glad to learn a few new things I didn't know. Uh, next we have from the Friends World Committee for Consultation section of the Americas at WCC. And Diane Zappas will be talking with us. Hello, friends. 
Thank you to Lake Erie Yearly Meeting for allowing us to speak with you about the work of the Friends World Committee for Consultation. I'm Diane Zappis. I'm an advancement manager for this section in the section of the Americas at Friends World Committee. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Friends World Committee is the global association of friends. So you have your local meeting house and then your quarterly meeting and your yearly meeting. And FWCC represents friends globally. Um, we, I love how Lake Erie Yearly Meeting asked us to do this. So I found this image of a tree that I just found to be so beautiful. And I thought I'd use that as a, as a slide. And I also really loved this quote. So I wanted to include that. Today, I'm going to touch briefly on FWCC's history. I'll spend most of this, time, this brief time on our current events and activities. Um, I had to ask about our earth outgrowth organizations. These are a few of them, but there are more, too many to list on this page. So I'll touch on some of these in the presentation. We were formed in 1937 to help bring Quakers together across theological and cultural diversity. Um, peace work before and during World War I brought friends together across the Atlantic, which gave purpose to their continuing connections. I've been with, with uh, FWCC for about six months now, and I'm, I'm relatively new to friends, so I'm not, I'm not the best person to talk about our, about our history, but if you want to become a representative, we actually have a book written about our history that we'd be happy to send you. And uh, or I will also set, put a link in the chat when I'm done speaking about um, that's an, a, a link to a, um, an article in Friends Journal in 2007 that really brought everything together and even included a, a really like a love story of people from different yearly meetings coming together and forming FWCC. Um, and it came out of American Friends Service Committee. So that was that's we're an outgrowth of them, I would imagine. Um, our, our, um, the way we are organized, we have four sections and a world office in London. And the four sections are the Africa section, the Asia West Pacific section, the Europe and Middle East section, and we are in the Americas section. The world office is planning our world plenary, our next world plenary meeting, which will be held, which is held about every 10 years. Um, and that is our global coming together of friends. Um, the theme will be Living the Spirit of Ubuntu, and it will be in August 2024, and that is represented by the center image. The Quaker United Nations Office is one of our outgrowth organizations where we are working to mitigate climate change. Um, if you want to learn more, go to the FWCC World Office website, and in the resources section, you'll find a six-minute and a 56 minute video about CUNO's climate change work at IPCC. These are really great resources. There's also a great CUNO review pamphlet that delves into their recent work and that's on the CUNO web, web page. There are approximately 400,000 friends worldwide and this is where we live. This is a map we put together of friends around the world. This is a good representation of the work we're doing today to bring friends the tools friends need in the 21st century. And this involves our recent work in the every 10 year census of religious congregations in the United States. FWCC collected current membership data on friends in the US and delivered its findings to the American Association of Religious Statisticians and results of that will be announced soon. We're continuing the census work and are currently working to do the same thing in South America and Central America as well, and we will continue it around the globe. Our ultimate goal is not to just have a paper map we can mail out, but to have an interactive experience online and not just Photoshopped images of the map on devices, which is what I did here. Um, we're working to code this online so you can easily zoom into meetings around the world, either physically or through technology. And uh, sorry for the shameless plug, but this month we happen to be giving away free maps when you donate. So check out our social media and you can, we'll send you a map when you donate. In the rest of the world, FWCC operates in English only because there are often so many different languages in places like Europe and Africa. But in the US, we're unique in that we, we do so many things bilingual and, and we really love that. It's just such a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to witness and a beautiful thing to be a part of, to really like, to really understand each other. 
Um, one of the most important accomplishments I think we've had in the last decade in the Americas, um, over the last five years of a 10 year plan, we've accomplished greater equity in involvement from Latin American friends. And this, this takes a lot of work. Um, and this is why we, we operate in a bilingual manner. Um, we developed a coalition of, of um, Latin American friends and they serve on every committee. And that way we, we know that we're being inclusive. Um, but that also means every committee meeting needs live interpretation. And we are currently, another one of our current projects is to build a better foundation. We can maintain this equity of participation of FWCC events by standing up our interpreter resources. We have a wonderful group of volunteers who help create our bilingual events and we'll be investing in interpreter training as well as our glossary of Quaker terms, which is translated into Spanish. It's current format, format we like to say is, is a photocopy of a photocopy uh, <laughs> on, a, on a PDF. So we're planning to make this an online shareable resource similar to the World Map Project and not just in Spanish, but in many different languages. And this is how we pray. We, um, we, we hold a section meeting now every year. It used to be every other year, but now that we have Zoom, we're gonna be doing hybrid every other year and, um, and just uh, virtual every other year. Um, 10 years ago, on average, about five friends from Latin American countries attended the section meetings. Today, we regularly have over 100 friends participating from these countries. And we have a, a blend of worship styles. Uh, so it's not the same anywhere you'll see because we have time for programmed worship as well as time for silence. And everyone thinks it's different because it's, it'll never be the same as any individual meeting or church. So I think that's a unique part of, of, of FWCC. We have different events like this throughout the year. We co-hosted a series of online Bible studies with Beacon Hill Friends House, featuring leaders from Bolivia and El Salvador from January through March. And this, these were bilingual. It's a chance to learn about different cultures while studying the Bible and the opportunity to speak with friends one-on-one -on -one through an interpreter. We also um, hosted the first ever Latin American and African Women's Conference in October. This was years in the making, and we, we found that to be very successful. And uh, we've been doing uh, these series of friendly com consultations as well. Um, this is a friend's meeting house in Bolivia. In, Bolivia. in January of this year, um, we, held a, we spent a week visiting yearly meetings in Bolivia, and they brought greetings and goodwill, which were greatly reciprocated. Our world office in 2024, we will be world marking 400 years since the birth of George Fox. Fox wasn't the only founder of the Quaker movement, but he was certainly central to creating the Religious Society of Friends, which is a presence around the world. So if you want to plan events around this, you can check out the world office website and they're offering um, a resource pack to assist, assist anyone planning to organize a, an event. This is a good, uh, Quick view of our events this year. We have uh, our 2022 uh, World Quaker Day coming up. And this year we're asking friends to do something different, take advantage of the Zoom opportunities and attend a meeting outside of your yearly meeting, which I see some are already doing today. And you can download a World Quaker Day poster at worldquakerday.org and hang it in your meeting or church. We have it in many languages. I think when I put together the slide a few weeks ago, it was in six languages, but I believe last time I checked, we were up to 11 languages and that will continue to grow. Um, so I love seeing that World Quaker Day in many, in all different languages. Um, in the Americas, we're gonna have a hybrid section meeting in 2024, where we're gonna gather at Hall River State Park in Greensboro, North Carolina. And the theme for both this event and World Quaker Day is becoming the Quakers the world needs. In closing, I want to leave you with something to show you how uh, <laughs> how to stay connected with the work of FWC and and its outgrowth organizations. Our, our sorry for the Batmanish newsletter, <laughs> um, but if you go to our website and scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can subscribe to our newsletter, and we'd love to stay connected with you. So thank you for having us here.
please don't hesitate to reach out to Clemence Mershon or me if you have any questions or have interest in serving Quakerism at the global le level and becoming a representative for Friends World Committee. I personally feel it's a profound experience to be connected with Global Friends. Clemence will be joining me in the Q&A session, so we'll be there for about a half hour, pop in anytime, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Rachel. Um, this is like yesterday, there's so many interesting things and in so many different organizations. It's one person can get overwhelmed, but I hope it helps all of us learn a little bit more about each of them. Um, the final present presenter for today will be Jackie Stillwell, who will be talking with us about right sharing of world resources. So welcome, Jackie. Sure. And we have three minutes now. Dun, 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 here we go, the speed talk. No, um, I, uh, I had such a good time thinking about the history roots and I don't get to talk about it very often. And so I pulled a few pictures out and I just wanna share them because it was fun. And also because right sharing of world resources uh, is very, uh, it's not that different from when we first started. So let me just click on the, slideshow here and see if I can uh, do a couple of these things. Wait, I have to, I always do this in the wrong order. Turn on the slideshow and then hit the screen thing. Hold on. There we go. Right, sharing of world resources. Our home office is in Richmond, Indiana, but the reality is that we're a remote organization now. And that's our website. If you want to go look for us, I am not going to take you to the website. I'm just going to share a few slides. So right sharing is a child of Friends World Committee for Consultation. It's very sweet to go after Diane. Um, wait, it's not supposed to do that. Um, and it started in 1967 as the 1% Fund when friends from all over the world gathered in North Carolina and were so clear that it didn't matter how much you had, you always had something to share. And that as friends, we should pull that money together um, and share it with each other and with others in the world who were needing things. So uh, the 1% fund was started and we were, as I said, under FWCC in the beginning. And uh, during that time, as money came in from all over the world from different yearly meetings, there were projects supported. <laughs> it's going to just make the slides go by itself. Um, projects supported in different areas of the world where there were Quakers. So if you were a friend somewhere doing work or knew someone that was doing work, you could send an application. So I'm just going to briefly review some of the projects that were supported. Um, in 81, this is a project of, for child health and nutrition in India. In 82, the Guatemala Scholarship Fund was supported. We know that today as Progresso, and they fund a lot of um, uh, Native Americans in Guatemala. In India, they funded women for learning typewriting to work in 1983. There's a health preventative uh, medicine clinic in Colombia that was supported in 87. In 87, David Camp visited uh, a group that did dairy work. Oh, sorry, I don't know why this is on automatic, but I'll just deal. Um, tailoring is still uh, an industry that many women get into in different parts of the world. Hammock making with a cooperative, we often fund collectives that do business together, not just as women's groups. Um, this is in Nepal, Evangelical Friends. I think a piece to notice, or I don't know how to make this thing stop. Um, a piece to notice about uh, right sharing is that we're working just like FWCC across all the branches of Quakerism with friends in Kenya and in, in Guatemala, in many parts of the world. In El Salvador, there was an irrigation project. There are many agricultural projects today. Oops. And in the Philippines, there was a microcredit program in 97. Today, our work has moved into essentially microcredit work. In 1999, FWCC had the clarity that um, 
having right sharing as a part of their organization was not really their mission. And so a group of people got together and created a new 501c3 that became independent. And i just give you a minute to see all these friendly faces that many of us still know, only they're a few years older now. The mission is God calls us to the right sharing of world resources from the burdens of materialism and poverty into the abundance of God's love to work for equity through partnership with our sisters and brothers throughout the world. Friends defined that mission in 1999 and we have revisited it over the years and it still rings so true that we haven't changed it. And this is a picture of Roland Krieger in uh, 2004 visiting a project in India. Roland was one of the um, initial board members when we became an independent organization. We have two primary areas that we work in. One is to provide opportunities for those with material resources to explore the burdens of materialism, the power of enough, and global responsibility and to promote balanced, sustainable lifestyles and sharing rightly from abundance. And we do that primarily through educational opportunities. One of them is a workshop that I would be happy to come to your monthly meeting, your regional meeting. Um, as was mentioned earlier, I'll be visiting Broadmead, Broadmead friends uh, later this summer. Um, and I can also do that virtually, as I've learned, because Zoom has made me learn it. So I can do that virtually or not. The key question in our Power of Enough workshop that we address is, how can I balance my use of time, energy, and things to free me to do God's work and to contribute to right relationship in our world? And this is a question that uh, is helpful to visit multiple times in our lives because it actually changes as we go through different stages of um, yeah, raising children, being elders, all sorts of things. We also have on our website educational tools um, that help te teach collaboration. The food sharing game is a lovely any ages, multiple generation uh, fun game, very simple. You can print out the thing and read the instructions. And the children's gratitude calendar, there's also an adult gratitude calendar, is very helpful during the month of uh, November as we lead up to Thanksgiving to broaden our sense of gratefulness. The other primary area that we work in is to provide resources for marginalized women in developing countries to improve the quality of life of the women, their families, and their communities and to empower these women in a sustainable and self-determined way. Hmm, we'd probably take out the word empowerment if we bothered to rewrite that goal right now. Um, it's very much a partnership. Uh, harking back to what Jonathan mentioned, we have done uh, several years now of looking at the framework that comes with colonization and the fact that we, as well as the countries we work in, uh, we're British colonies and it affects all of us in how we think and frame the work we do together. The three countries we're working in right now are in um, Southern India in mostly Tamil Nadu, um, partly in Andhra Pradesh. We work in Kenya and also in Sierra Leone. And uh, beginning later this year, we will, and I'll talk about this more in a minute, we are, uh, stepping into Guatemala in Central America. You'll see here that we choose countries where the wealth per capita is absolutely at the bottom. These are our field representatives. In 2019, we had our first field rep consultation. We were able to bring five of our field reps to the United States so they could meet each other, meet the board members, travel around, um, and talk about the work that's going on in their countries. Uh, there are two additional women who weren't able to be with us, one because she was about to give birth uh, to her first child, and the other started two weeks later, and so the government wasn't ready to let her come on a visa yet. But our field reps are on the ground. They are the ones running the programs in each country. Help, they do the training, the support for the women, the visiting, um, all of the project work. 
So how do we work? Let me see what time is it. Okay. Um, essentially, in this part of the program, ride sharing gives uh, women who are groups of women, they have to be in a group, and they're usually about up to 30 people, maybe 35 people in the group. They apply for a grant. The grant comes to the ride sharing board after the field reps have gone to visit the group of women. They've talked with them about their, their plans. They've vetted to see how, how is the group working together? Do they have a savings plan? Are they in fact saving already? All sorts of things. Then the group is, uh, a grant is given. It is given to the group of women. They take the group and manage it. The field reps help them set up a micro lending piece. Individual women borrow the funds and then the money is repaid back to the group with interest. The interest helps create an emergency saving fund so that when businesses struggle or family members get sick, there's a way for the women to support each other with that. And then it is also available for reloaning to new women or to women whose business comes to a place where it's ready to expand it. Um, this is a picture of a self-help group in yeah. India. Is it my one minute your, your time is up if you, um, if you okay. want to just finish this, this quickly. Oh, we're almost done. <laughs> yep, we are almost done. Um, we, last year we funded 42 groups. That was a little over a thousand women who received initial grants. Uh, a little over 3000 lives were changed and that was just in one year. That happens every year and it then repeats the following year. And Guatemala is our next country. We have, uh, we're in the process of contracting with an organization there and we've been to visit and we're very excited about it. Guatemala has a very high poverty rate and uh, 20,000 Quakers who are eager to work with us. Um, right sharing circles, you'll hear more about next year. That's a new educational program that we're uh, looking to begin. And that's it for now. Great, thanks. Thanks very much, Jackie. And thanks to all of the presenters. Um, we're now going to break into breakout rooms where you can choose one of these groups to hear more about, ask questions and, and get more information. And I'm going to turn it over to Bill to explain how we do that. Well, you're going to be uh, given a list of possible rooms to join with a blue button that says join and you can jump in there and then when you're in a room, you can leave that room come back and then join another room if you'd like. And we're going to we have a, a half an hour for this. So there's some time to connect and check some things out. So let's go ahead and get that started. I think uh, make sure that the uh, the leaders go to the correct room. <laughs> and I guess we need to stay there. We can't go shopping. But I want to hear more about everyone else. <laughs> I know, so do I. <laughs> See y'all later. Where's the breakout room thing? Oh, I see. Sometimes it's hidden in the- I got more, it, I got it, I clicked it. Yep, yeah. we're good. Scroll down and you'll find it. If you can't sort it out, I can assign you. <clears throat> I'm not seeing it. Uh, okay, so. Diane, oh, I see it. Okay. Bill, I'm uh, Bill. I'm not seeing where. So I'll send you to FWCC. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to go to Peace Teams. Bill. Okay. And Barbara, I haven't decided, Bill. <laughs> I was just looking at the groups and but seeing. You, you know how to do it. Yeah, I was just making sure everybody had somebody in it and Good. could go to any of them. So I hadn't decided. Two of them only have a couple of people.
I, I am thinking of taking a break and not going to small group. 